What's well, all beautiful people? Look, the sun is shining. It's quite warm here in the daytime because we're a little bit nearer to the sun. <laughs> it just gets very cold at night, which is delicious because you can get under bed covers instead of just sleeping on top of a bed and feeling like you don't sleep at all. So, this is the uh, full moon in Aries. So, the moon's in Aries and the sun will be in Libra. And it takes place at 14.56. Oh, got a wonky table. It keeps moving. At 14.56 GMT UTC on the 20th. But before that, obviously Mercury and Jupiter are coming out of retrograde. But I notice something which we need to have a little chat about first of all which is there's a very strange in the heliocentric version of astrology which i use for sound healing um there's a bit of a weird ring fencing going on of the moon so what's heliocentric it's when you put the sun at the center of the universe as it is well of our solar system as it is on all the other planets orbit around it so you look at where they're sitting in reference to their orbit so i've drawn a little chart here which i hope you can see so you can see there's this pink ring fencing going on bring my pen in so we've got jupiter neptune gaia uranus and mercury and then you've got the moon and the earth in the center and it's like energetically they've built a fence an energetic fence around the earth so what signs are they in well um i'm giving you these this information for the full moon but this this ring fence is now and then this part of the ring fence here between mercury and jupiter will fall away so you're basically losing three sides and we'll just be left with this line that runs between Gaia Uranus and Neptune so Jupiter is obviously in Aquarius Neptune is in Pisces Gaia Uranus is in Taurus and then Mercury is in Libra I just check it out yeah 10 degrees so we've got this kind of energy where mars and venus and saturn and pluto and ceres and chiron are all being hidden from this focused energy that's coming down on the earth and what's fascinating about it is because it involves mercury mercury is the throat but the more interesting part is the three that are left in sound healing are the three sounds that are called the great cleansers. So you have Gaia, Uranus, which is the crown, the space where our consciousness enters the body from the galactic center of the universe. Neptune is the liver's kidneys and spleen. And Jupiter is the energy wings. So right at the moment, there's something very deeply healing going on that needs to be spoken about but it needs that the energy is to speak about it calmly somehow because it's not until mercury and jupiter go stationary prograde that the energy of the sun and mars and venus will come crashing in not so much saturn and pluto they will come in but the energies that you'll really suddenly feel on that full moon will be that also uh, will be the energy of, of sort of emotional fires so i just want to play you the chord if i can see it in the sun here so we have i need to turn that up it's not very loud This is Gaia, Uranus, the crown. And then we have Jupiter. Nice. And then we, which is a G. And then we have the D sharp of Neptune. 
which is quite a nice chord but then you add into the mix the, the G sharp of Neptune uh, of, of Mercury so basically the stable part of it is Neptune and Gaia Uranus and then Jupiter and Mercury are a semitone apart they're like a searing knife coming in to slice something away so what we're going to do I'm not going to sing the notes now we will be doing some other sound healings soon but for the moment I just want to look at the planets and what they're what they're bringing to this frequency of all the energies ring fencing the earth and the moon in so let's have a little look first I'll keep that booklet just down there it's a very tiny table so I've got the four let's start with we're just going to put a card on each to give a general energy I actually mm, no you see now I'm being told what I need to do is lay them out and I need to put a card on each and then I need to see what their journey the energies between their part of the fence is about interesting so I feel mm, I'm gonna put those back because I, I it was thunder and the child but I wasn't really sure where they fell and because I was thinking about Gaia and the crown and they didn't fall anywhere near it, I don't think that was right. So let's go again, please, Spirit. Can we have, please, one card for Gaia? If another one falls, it's for Neptune. There we go. So Gaia. She's dealing with abundance, with Earth, with the natural world. And she's in Taurus. She's about reaping rewards. And then Neptune, please. What's Neptune looking at? What's Neptune looking at? Neptune, ancient time, the time master. Interesting to think of him as cleansing. So we've got 10, 12 there. Jupiter, please. Jupiter is this expansive vision. And that's a divine nine forty-five. And Mercury, Mercury is the card of Pluto, but letting go, a speaking something to release something. Interesting. So, let's have uh, a rune between each to give us the energies between them, and then we'll start reading them. breaking into a little sweat for the first time ever <laughs> here obviously not in Merida so can we please have one card can we please have card for the journey the fence between Gaia and Neptune right we've got three so we've got Kuzma, the moon, Björk, new beginnings, and Vane, fluidity, weathercock. Between Neptune and Jupiter, between Neptune and Jupiter, we've got fruit bearing, Eppelbera, and Yor, the world serpent. So there's some kind of destined uh, fruition coming there between Jupiter and Mercury, between Jupiter and Mercury, between Jupiter and Mercury, it's sharp, it's the thorn. And that is that semitone, driving something uncomfortable. And between Mercury and Gaia, that's about six cards, I can't do that many. Mercury and Gaia, there we go. Binding, Yana, binding something 
something that's woven but unwinding it unwinding it undoing a coil the thorn is trying to cut a thread that will leave the energy of this frequency so oh moving table again rockabye baby so oh, i didn't do the bells and i'd like to do the bells before i read so let's just put the bells in I feel we need to read first the energies that are going to fall away. So we're going to look at the space between Mercury and Jupiter. So here we've really got this energy of cleansing an, a, a, a lie, an untruth. It's, there, it's a very uncomfortable throat energy, very uncomfortable throat energy. Um, and it's somehow this need to let go, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, five. Oh, it's a natural progression. It's something that's completely in the right direction, but it won't. It's like, unless you can face the thorn, you won't get, as they go, stationary prograde. You won't get that sense of it having that kind of knock-on effect and moving things through. That's really quite fascinating. Let's get a couple of these. How's this affecting us and the Earth and the Moon right now? Right, so it's about hidden emotions. It's about unspoken emotions. It's about the veil, the, 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 the fog, the deep. It's deep. This is connecting right the way across into this Time Master Neptune energy. There's a fruit. There's something that's deep, like a treasure chest. Never mind apple bearer. Try and think of this frequency as a treasure chest. There's a whale on this card that's about to go deep diving, deep into the emotions. There is a sense of needing song, needing song. This priestess of cups, she's playing a harp. And the, the, there's a kind of frightened planet hiding behind the clouds. You see, I am getting the sense that it's, it's Neptune coming out from behind the fog. I'm getting that sense from the eyes behind the cloud. He's been staring at me, really staring at me in this card. So, there's something, there's a conch shell, which is uh, very much an, an a Mercurian, a mercurial announcement that's chained in to this tower. But when the fog comes, when the fog drifts away, this it's an inevitable destiny point. That's what the conch shell is. You have to reach this point. We have to, all of us, face this latest tower moment. And it is coming. When the fog clears, and there is a sense that this is quite dramatic, and it's linked to the Gaia Uranus energy. So let's have, I need to know what's unwinding. What's unwinding between Mercury and Gaia Uranus? It's interesting, oh, the sun is making me so, so hot. We we'll pop those cards in that bowl. We've got cards scattered all over the floor. And that's what I feel 
is this energy. It's almost like an, uh, a tidy up is needed. D you've got to bring everything together. It's like a marionette and all the strings are tangled. And you've got to bring the whole thing back together and you've got to really pass some very difficult uh, um, yarns uh, that are stretched between yeah and it is this look the, the, the five of cups all these different yarns it's like a great big tangle emotional tangle that needs to be dealt with it's that energy of the time master this neptunian old it's down the song lines down the timelines down the inheritance and here she's untangling the lightning to bring us into this energy of balance. And it is, again, because of these cards we are looking at, um, sorry, I'm just being drawn to something there. It's really the snake wrangler goddess. And in this card, you see this person bringing the tangle and the goddess is unweaving it. And that goddess energy somehow is translating to the Gaia Uranus energy of corn coming in through the crown unwinding an attachment to something again there's music being played the snakes must be untangled there's the moon is just a kind of oxbow lake oh an oxbow lake we're in the year of the ox metal ox so we have that and then we have these three cards here the devil, the justice, and the two of discs. So, this is, uh, the energy of the devil is how you've moved through a series of, of, of life, events, histories, stories, and you've reached a kind of level, but there's nowhere else to go. You've actually got to unweave those stories and come back down because you're chained to the top and you need to come back down these stories they're 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 legend almost there's something that you shouldn't be concerning yourself with we need to find ourselves in balance and now we've got this appearance of the norms it is a destiny point this is again it, it's very much all of this is pulling into the energy of Neptune. Neptune's a really big feature in this current moon. Who knew? But, well, Neptune did. There's a destiny point. It's already been written. The white heart that we've talked about is coming through again. And this card is about when you've completely unwoven everything, you can see your the, the truth of your place in the world and yourself and another and this is the energy of someone that you share frequency with the truth of sharing frequency with someone but unwoven unpicked unmuddled oh i feel like i'm in merida again with the way this is uh <laughs> sweats rolling down me two we have then the, all of that energy of the unweaving will break away and that's when Mars and Venus and the Sun will power in on the 20th and it will leave just the line, the barrier, which is the moon deflections and this is on the day of the full moon in Aries. And look, Aries is fire, Aries is Mars. And on that moment, that's when the walls will come down and almost that tower moment will come tearing in on the 20th. And it's to, be, it's, it's to bring a new beginning. And this fluidity is you've got to be prepared to change direction. This card often represents someone that changes direction at will, but this is a much bigger energy. This is like solar wind coming in the barrier comes down and whoosh and then because you've got this the one wall remaining between Gaia Uranus and Neptune just behind that 
is Eris, and Eris is chaos. And she's just before, at about midnight on the 20 years, GMT, the moon will go into conjunction with that and then move forwards. The walls have come down and boom, you get this massive fiery energy coming in. So let's just ask, what's the wall between Neptune and Gaia? What's going on with the moon deflections, the new beginning, Neptune and Gaia? The moon deflections, Neptune and Gaia. I have to bend down to get that one. So, it's so beautiful, look. There is the room. There is that space that I talked about. Where have I put it? This, this corral that the earth and the moon are trapped all alone in is represented by this four of discs trying to find our way out. It will be found. The way out is already established. There's something about um, it being a great cleansing. As I said, there's fire in the middle, which is a little bit like the energy of smoke in a sweat lodge. Oh, sweat lodge. We've been in a perpetual sweat lodge. And then we move on to the five of wands. I see in this picture volcan volcanic activity. I also see water phoenix. I also see kind of sphinx energy. There's a riddle being... There's a riddle being posed, answered... Because here we have with it, this is the energy of Venus coming in. The Five of Wands is the Sun and Mars coming in. And the energy of Venus is bringing pure and utter love. But there's a, there's a quiz, question, a riddle in between. And then we have Judgment and the Shaman of Wands. It's like there's some kind of fiery judgment. Here, the water phoenix has become like an eye of Horus, an all-seeing energy. There's something about the movement. There's something very fiery about the earth past this point, and I don't know exactly what that means so let's ask no let's just go to it is the moon let's ask the moon what it has to say on the situation moon what do you want to say about when you are full in Aries and there's this energy of fiery frequency coming in now, this card has just fallen. It's the blade. This is that G-sharp G. This is when it, it's cutting away at something. Blade is creating new space. The moon is working to bring a new kind of balance. Remember, this is the full moon that follows the Libra new moon, which is about balancing in air frequency. So the moon is cutting a new space in a new frequency and it's using Mercury and Jupiter what else would you like to say moon it's another six it's the rainmaker I'm just going to get a third card the moon please there we go and the spiral so the rainmaker is this energy. The moon, it's like the moon's holding off emotions. The moon's waiting to cut a new space for these emotions. And it will be something that grows slowly. But there's something about don't fall into the trap. That's what's being posed over here by the Sphinx and the volcano and the water 
phoenix. I need to ask about this water phoenix because it keeps turning up. Let's go into Odin and the Nine Realms. Can you tell me something about this water phoenix? Oh, it's like it's at that. I could hear splashing sounds. It's like it doesn't know how to get up from out of the ground. Coming up from the realm of hell. It's a water phoenix. It's light energy. And it's coming from the under, underneath us, inside the core of the earth, deep within the spiral. It's this water phoenix emerging. This is the water phoenix. I don't know why I didn't see that before. 66. What else would you like to say about the water phoenix, please? What else would you like to say about the water phoenix? <coughs> So this is Hel and this is Hagal. This is the same thing. It's showing us this energy that's in the back of this card, this riddle of magma, riddle of the volcano, that leads to an energy of bliss. It leads directly back to the corn, the cornucopia, the energy of abundance. But there's something about There's something about the temporariness of some kind of stress as we enter this judgment gateway. It's like that's that thorn frequency that we had at the very beginning. We're heading towards an uncomfortable destiny point that will transform so much. Do you want to give us a little bit more about this riddle then? It's trying to say it's a giant portal. It's like this ring fence at the moment, this frequency of the planets all around the Earth and the Moon is a giant portal, and the gateway of it hasn't opened, but its energies are transforming and shaking and, and, and adapting the frequency of the Earth. And at the moment, it all feels eerily creepy. It's the bigger picture. It's a much bigger picture, a much bigger picture. So I'm just going to go to uh, – I just want the tarot to just give us a little story at the end to just say really seriously what's going on. Because I'm, I just, all I'm – it's not that I'm visualizing uh, something happening. It's an energy feeling. But it's a very big energy feeling. It's a giant, it's almost like a dimensional portal is being opened over the earth. Tell me about this thorn, this Thur's portal, this giant frequency that's about to unlock over the earth. It's a gateway, it's a giant portal, it's the Aeon. It's the Aeon, though represents bringing in a new era, the age of Horus, the age of the grown-up child, the emotionally stable, and it comes with the Nine of Cups. So it's almost like there's a sort of a sense that you kind of must not panic. You mustn't panic. Also, this is Jupiter in Pisces. So this gateway that's opening starts on, I guess, the 18th, the 20th, and it runs right the way through to the 29th of December when Jupiter will re-enter Pisces, which is its home. And it's at home with Neptune. They're both going to be in Pisces at that point. So this is very much a journey. And we've got the eclipse and all sorts of that. Can you give us any more information, please, about this giant dimensional portal shift that's taking place All right two cards look we're manifesting love love we're manifesting love it's like that this card is kind of like ching it comes in nine of cups the nine of cups just needs its one cup 
and then it moves to two cups. There's something about you have to remain in the frequency of love. Whatever you witness at the moment in terms of this kind of energetic tower moment that's coming, you have to try and understand that it's cosmically intended. There's something about staying in love keeps you safe, which is a bit weird. Any final messages? So, Seven of Swords. It's a very fast exit. <gasps> Seven, eight, eight. It's breaking, it's breaking all the interference that you've never been able to see through before. This frequency, this shift, this timeline. Remember the Time Masters there working with the ancient timelines from the beginning. There's something that's bringing a rapid shift and movement to break through the interference. And that's Jupiter and that's Mercury working together with the moon. There's something about the moon hitting Aquarius, which will be um, almost the beginning of next month. Uh, begin, I mean, the beginning in a month's time, not quite. So this is a setup point. There's something about the, the via combustor frequency um, because the moon is about to shift into the via combustor or is in it now. Uh, or will be for the, for the full moon in Aquarius. No. There's something... They're showing me Scorpio season arriving, the sun arriving, and it being a via combustor. It's the first Scorpio season in air epoch, and they're showing me that as relevant to take us through because the next full moon, which is the lunar eclipse one, so there's a whole series of quite dramatically large shifts in time. I, look, here, where I am in Javel, which is San Cristobal de la Casas, every time I go into the town just to exercise my back a bit, because I can't really carry any shopping at the moment, um, I go in, I go, or I notice shops or I pop into a shop just to look around, and then the next time I walk down that street, that shop's not there. There's something like, again, it's, it, it's like I'm being shown these shifts. Things that you thought were there are not there. Nothing is fully stable at the moment. There's this fluidity. And the moon is almost trying to deflect the fear emotion that rises and yet we're being driven towards that fear and we're supposed to stay in this frequency of trust and love so that's the message I'm being told to look at the bottom of that deck it's the fire coming in ten of swords to bring an ending this is the sun and mars whacking their frequency in when the wall comes down there's a there's it, it's interesting because we've got 12 air on the full moon and then we've got seven fire six water and two earth so the energy of this new moon is that the Earth's frequency is the weakest, which will enable the other planets. So air 12 and then fire and water, 6 and 7 is 13, moving that frequency into a creative fluid change, that shift, that... There's a definite big thorny portal coming, not on the 20th, but coming as we move towards the 29th of December. There's a lot to go through. There's an awful lot to go through. And I'll be here with you for all of it. So I hope that helps. Please don't be... Uh, <laughs> don't be stressed by it. Stay in the love, people. Okay? And we've got the lovely, 
love tree, the heart tree behind, just reminding us. So, wassail, and I'll see you again very soon for a sound healing.